Welcome to your nap session, which is your news around Panama. So we apologize for not having done one of these in a while, but um, we figured it'd be a good time to update you all on some going ons in Panama. But first, we invite you all to join our community for pre-release and exclusive content. You can click on the link in the description down below or the QR code on your screen. Also, I want to remind you about our Panama Relocation online course. If interested, our course has 50 instructional videos, over 50 instructional videos that's going to walk you step by step through everything you need to do to complete your move to Panama seamlessly and efficiently. It's going to help you to avoid costly mistakes. We have several sets of checklists that begin as early as two years prior to your move all the way up to moving day. We have an international relocation planning tool that is going to help you plan your move out like the very important project that it is. So it's a great investment for you and your family. Please do give us some heavy consideration. If interested, you can check out our website at Panama Relocation Online Courses.com or click the QR code that's on your screen or the link in the description. Also want to remind you all that you can book your Zoom consultation with us at chosenfewexpats at gmail.com. And with that, let's get on with your news around Panama. So the major thing of note that is taking place right now is Panama's national election is coming up here on May 5th. Um, so we will let you know the results of that. It is a presidential election. Uh, Panama's presidential term is five years instead of the four years that we have in the United States. And, you know, the president cannot run for a second term. Uh, at least not back to back. So uh, there will be a new president in Panama. We'll give you an update on that. The other big piece of news that has taken place here recently is that Panama was fighting a toxic fire. So um, we'll give you the uh, article here on that. But they were getting some help even from Costa Rica to help fight this fire. And this fire was taking place at a landfill. And it was causing toxic fumes, you know, over the city. You can see the smoke there. Um, it says the landfill covers an area of 130 hectares, but its toxicity extends to 9,000 hectares. One hectare is about 2.5 acres, just for your reference there. So they were using several aerial drops, using a lot of water to fight this fire to get it contained. And again, this was at the Cerro Pantacone landfill. So it emitted a lot of strong toxic clouds with a strong smell of burning rubber. So they have a video here. Let's take a look at it real quick. Okay, so there you go. There is the story on that. Uh, so fire is under control, but um, it did cause some concern here for, for a few days in the areas around the city. Again, we live about an hour west of the city near the beaches in Gorgona, so this did not really impact us at all out here. Um, <clears throat> the next thing that we want to cover here is that in spite of the much publicized drought, the Panama Canal produced a record profit. <laughs> now, you know, you may be saying, well, okay, well, how is this possible? Well, let's first look into the article on that. And let's just see exactly how much money did the Panama Canal Authority deliver to the Panamanian government after all of their operating expenses. So this here from Barron says, Panama Canal says it produced record revenue despite drought. The Panama Canal delivered $2.5 billion to the National Treasury for last year's operations, despite the low water levels that limited ship transits. So, you know, you may say, well, hey, how is this possible? Well, you may recall in previous NAP sessions, we reported out to you that Panama was charging tolls for people to skip to the front of the line. And some of these shipping companies paid as much as $4 million to skip to the front of the line. So those 
extra tolls to skip to the front of the line helped to offset some of the cost that was lost uh, due to the decreased volume through the canal. So this says, uh, this year's contributions are the highest amount that the Panamanian state has received from the canal since inaugurated by the United States in 1914. So in spite of this drought, Panama raked in more money than they ever had after all of their operating expenses. Uh, the Canal Authority earlier said it received $3.3 billion in total revenue in the period paid from October 21st, 2022 to September 30th, 2023, $319 million higher than a year earlier. Of that amount, after deducting operating costs, it passed along $2.5 billion to the Panamanian government. So there you go. You know, we hinted at this before. Um, yes, the drought is a concern. We're still in a drought now. They are estimating an estimated loss of 500 to $750 million in Panama Canal revenue in 2024 due to the drought. We're entering the rainy season now. Um, so the hope is that things will return somewhat back to normal in terms of the water level starting to go back up. Um, but the reason why I kind of pointed this out earlier for people not to be so concerned, um, you know, with this situation with the canal is because of the tolls that they were charging. And then also when you look at, you know, the past revenue that they made, and let's take another look at it here again. When you look at Panama Canal revenue, <clears throat> now this is through 2021 shown here on this chart. We know that the revenue for 2022 was $4.2 billion. So as you can see here, the, the, the revenue is going up every single year. In 2016, Panama opened up the new canal, the wider canal for the Neo Panamax ships, the larger ships, so that they can get those ships through and those ships also pay a higher toll than uh, through the old canal. So you can see from that point on, I mean, the revenue pretty much you know, it's, it's skyrocketing here, it's up every single year. And like I said, in 2022, it was 4.2 billion. So I haven't heard the number reported yet, the actual number reported yet for the entire year of 2023, calendar year wise, it looks like they do their fiscal year from, um, you know, the end of September to the end of September. So if you take into account that the Revenue for the Panama Canal in 2022, we know it's $4.2 billion. And although not reflected on this graph, will be somewhere in this area. And the fact that they're saying that they anticipate losing $500 to $750 million in revenue for 2024 due to this situation with the drought, you take 4.2 minus, say, like $700 million, you know, that's going to take you down to around back here, like 3.5 million. So that may take you back to the revenue that you received in the 2020 time frame, which is $3.5 billion still. That's still higher than the revenue that you received in 2019, 2018, or any year prior to that in the existence of the Panama Canal. You know, so basically I say all of that to say this. Yes, this drought, you know, it took its toll. The canal did still produce record profit in spite of that so you know if things rebound you know this year in terms of the rainfall to get things at least somewhat back on track yeah you know the the rate of growth of the revenue you know was, was slowed or reduced but when you look at it overall in its totality panama still raking in a lot more money than they ever had before the year 2020 or 2021 so you know, basically, I mean, the, the point is, like, yes, they do need to figure out a situation where if you have a drought like this again, you know, where are you going to get the water? You know, they're working on some alternative solutions. But I guess my point is that the, you know, that the immediate impact is may not be as heavy financially as, you know, what, you know, what people had feared. So let's find some further evidence of that. <clears throat> So one piece of information here is that the banks received $651.5 million from the Panamanian government. So let's dig into this article. Uh, it's very interesting when you look at it. So here it says, government 
paid banks, pays banks $651.5 million for preferential interest with debt securities. The resources will be paid through public debt securities to cancel debts for the preferential interest granted by banks on mortgage loans and for tax incentives for restorations in the Old Town, reported by President Laurentino Cortizo. The Old Town is Casco Viejo or Casco Antigo, which you may hear referred to. It's the area of Panama, which has the old um, Spanish architecture buildings, which kind of reminds you of old San Juan or, say, like the French Quarter in New Orleans. It's that particular area. So uh, let's just read some more of the article here. Here is the, um, you know, the president and other folks meeting to sign this decree. So banks will again receive public debt securities as part of payment for the section of preferential interest granted on mortgage loans, as well as the tax incentives for restoration in the old town. In total, banks will receive 60, in total, Banks will receive $651.5 million in these financial instruments, as reported by the President of the Republic, Laurentino Cortizo, on X. And here it is. His quote is, Today I announced the bank representatives that state debt of $651.5 million for preferential interest and preferred interest on a restoration of the old town will be canceled through Treasury notes and via budget. Here's the important part, without affecting the 2024 fiscal deficit, said the national leader. So, you know, this is great. Where did this money come from? You know, they say they're able to do this without impacting the um, fiscal budget. This is March 27, 2024. So um, let's read a little bit more here. In a statement sent later by the presidency is detailed that after meeting with the representatives of the main banks in the country, the national leader signed an executive decree through which the national government cancels during the fiscal period of 2024 the sum of $651.5 million to local banks. For the debt that was outstanding due to preferential interest that banks assume when giving mortgage loans for housing units with a value of less than $180,000. Part of the resources Issued in securities will also be able to recognize tax incentives for restorations in the old town, Casco Viejo, of credit applications validated as of January 31st, 2024. Um, and then it goes on to give you some more information here, more details. Uh, so there's the president signing the decree. And... Um, Let's see here. It also indicates that it will be paid with the recognition of tax credits to mortgage creditors with debts of less than $5.2 million of preferential tranches in mortgage loans. During the meeting with the representative of the banking sector, President Cortizo reviewed the economic situation and said that inflation is currently 1.2%, the lowest in all of Latin America. I believe in Panamanian banking, said the president. He added that banking was key to consecutive economic growth that the country has had in recent years. And these are very interesting statements here by the president, because one other reason we note for moving to Panama is the stability of the banking system and the safety of the banking system. Uh, although they do not have, you know, like FDIC and things like that, um, they're very conservative in their lending practices. Uh, so, you know, it's rated 11th highest in the world or 11th safest banks in the world is Panama's rating. And in addition to this here, the president points out that the current inflation is 1.2%. That is another reason, great reason for moving to Panama. Because, you know, even though you have um, the U.S. dollar, you know, that dollar is going to stretch farther in Panama than, say, in the United States for that reason. And it's because U.S. inflation is... 2.6 times higher than Panama. That's as of this moment. It it actually always tends to stay two and a half to three times higher than Panama is the rate of inflation in the United States. So um, don't take my word for it. Let's take a look at it here and see. So here is a chart that's showing you the U.S. monthly rate of inflation. Last year it reached over 6%. 
So in May of 2023, it was over 6% all the way back here. But now you're looking at 3.15%. So if you take that 3.15%, divide into that Panama's 1.2% inflation, and what you get is 2.6. So the U.S. rate of inflation is about 2.6 times higher than that of Panama. So say you can move down here, you can stretch your dollar. Panama is, I would say, is not cheap by any means. It's not, you know, it's not cheap. There are cheaper places to live, less expensive places to live, like Colombia, Ecuador, but there's trade-offs with that. You know, you have a lot of, you know, violence in Colombia, some risk you're taking there. You have a lot of, um, you know, instability right now in Ecuador with some politicians having been assassinated and, uh, you know, prisoners escaping and things like that in Ecuador. So Panama is, is more expensive than some of those countries, but it's still less expensive than the United States, you know, overall. So um, especially when you look in terms of your labor costs, you know, some of your product costs may be the same. It may be higher if it's imported, but a lot of your labor costs um, are, you know, much, much lower than in the States. And, you know, your housing can vary depending upon your choices and your wants. You know, you can find some housing that's, you know, much less expensive than what you would pay in the States and definitely get um, more out of it in that way. So, um, again, these are the articles that we kind of wanted to point it out to you. Um, we want to remind you all that we do have a store on Shopify. So you can... <clears throat> purchase our merchandise at this website here, chosen few expatsmyshopifycom or you can click on any of the products that are uh, below this video. Also, want to remind you to review our affiliate links in the description or in the first comment for recommended products and services. And please do like, subscribe, and comment down below so that you can be notified of our future videos. And we will catch you all on the next one.